Right, this is uh, Merce doing uh, uh, a FPVOD and it's a uh, Terminus Protoss on Bluestorm and it's being played on iCup and it's a B minus versus a B minus game so I guess the level of play is uh, at least fairly high um, I haven't been doing a lot of VODs recently uh, or well, I guess it's been a couple of months at least. I'm not, sh I'm not too sure. So, anyways, uh, Blue Storm, Terran vs. Protoss. Um, I think uh, it might favor Terran a little bit in the end game, at least uh, if you're Flash. Uh, because if you're, or like if you play like Flash, that is because. Uh, once the map gets split into two parts, uh, I think that Protoss has a really hard time to win. Uh, even though that, even though they have like carriers or arbiters, because as a Terran player on this map, if you manage to split the, the map into two, then all you have to do basically is defend. And if you manage to defend, all of your expos while his rent runs out, well, I mean, you win, basically. Or it's a draw, in the worst case scenario, that is. So, I'm, uh, I started out by building my first supply boat very, very far to the left, because I know that a lot of Protoss likes to open up with two proxy gates to the far left, of or to the far right depending on your starting position and that's uh, pretty much a very good way to scout that early probe and uh, it's not very good on your economy though because it sets you back a little bit in the beginning because the, uh, the SV has to travel such a long distance so that you lose a couple of minerals by doing that uh, but I I guess it's worth it because if you don't scout two price against your main base early enough you, you will be in a lot of trouble so as you can see in my main I've got like, uh, like kind of a wall in you know and most Terrans use it on this position because um, first of all that depot and the barracks uh, enables the marines to go through the little the, the little tiny space there, but salads can't get through, and that makes it a lot easier to micro versus a proxy salad rush or something like that. Also, you can make the wall even better when you're able to build a factory. As you see, as you can see, I've like completely wall off the one part, so he has to go all, all around the command center uh, at the Vespin Gazer. Yeah, about that place. So uh, it's a really good way to defend versus early slots. And as you could see, he built a couple of slots in the beginning, uh, and it didn't bother me at all because he, he found no way to reach my marines so he's just trying to find a good way a good angle to come in for an attack but there simply is no good angle so that's that's exactly why I built it like I did so anyways I'm gonna go for a uh, FD expansion fake double because I feel like a lot of protoss uh, likes to open up with uh, two or three sellouts like this guy and then transition into a quick DT rush while they're expanding and versus that it's always good to have mines you know I mean a one fact expansion with siege might work as well but you, you can only rely on the turrets and if you go FD you can have, you have like you can delay with the mines while you're getting your eBay up and so I, I guess it's a lot safer and I saw there with my scout that he hasn't gotten the range upgrade so I know that something's definitely up you know uh, if you see a Protoss uh, 
this far into the game and he hasn't started his range upgrade and his expo isn't started then that's a clear well that's an indicate that indicates that he's up to something cheesy like let's say a dark temple rush so I'm gonna go ahead and mine up because I know that it's probably DTs that are coming and I know that my eBay is a little late so I'm kinda worried and here I see that he's sending through all of his salas now I'm definitely convinced that there's a DT rush coming and luckily enough for me he decides to try to ramp instead of going through that small little choke there had he gone through that small little choke he would have definitely gotten like a Dark Templar inside my base without a doubt but that bought me some time because he lost his first DT uh, and I was able to play as a couple of turrets so I mean I'm, I mean the damage is still he's still doing quite a lot of damage because he delayed my command center and he delayed my turrets but I mean it could have been a lot worse and I got my turret up right there so uh, I'm, I'm, it's fine at the moment but he's gotten like a very 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 tiny advantage by by delaying my expansion and forcing me to make an academy such so early on you know so I'm gonna have to make up for it and I'm pretty sure that like uh, no I mean I'm sure that if I just get early vulture speed uh, I might be able to harass him a little bit and even the score out by taking out a few probes because if the toss goes for an early detour rush they'll be having observers later and their range won't finish uh, as fast as, as it usually does so defending versus like 8 or 10 really quick vultures doesn't isn't like the easiest thing to do so uh, um, I decided to get uh, the speed uh, directly after my expansion came up because I need I know that like he delayed my expansion a little and in in order to even that out I need to hurt his economy a bit used to I mean it's not even like I, I don't even have to hurt his economy at this point but you know I'm a little little bit behind not not like you so behind that you would notice but you know it doesn't really matter if he dark temple rush me or not I mean this is still a pretty nice move to get a couple of speed vultures right after your expansion finishes some protoss players doesn't expect the uh, vulture harass that early on so they might be greedy grab a second expansion without defending it properly and then a couple of vultures will do magic so I, w I decided to go around the back because if he would have spotted them earlier he might have been able to block his entrance off with a pylon wall or something. So I'm gonna go around. So I'm gonna go around the back, and I notice that he has the second expansion up, and his units aren't in place. So this is gonna be really good for me. Uh, I decided to skip the expo and just go straight for the main because I figured it'd be too much hassle to just to focus on it because he had it, he had the expo blocked off pretty well. So I go for his main and a little cute mines is up there and I get a decent amount of probes and it's just enough to uh, even things out a little bit and meanwhile I'm getting my second expansion up and on maps like Blue Storm and well let's say Othello uh, it's really easy to go for the flash build which means that you get an early uh, armory in pretty early academy and you go for the second expansions when you have expansion when you have two factories up and the goal of this build which I believe a lot of you already know but it's, it is to basically it's to establish a really strong economy while rushing upgrades so you you would want to have at least like 2-1 in upgrades when you move out for the first time and it's a really really strong build because once you get 2 in attack and 1 plus uh, in armor uh, and it's that early you'll still be at, a li at like 140 and maybe 150 size so 
it's going to be a really strong push and not to mention that it's like the perfect counter to a quick carrier build which is very popular on this map basically because you can't really rush rush over to the toss and fast push him and well I guess you can push his little choke and take out his uh, first expansion but in the 1.2 version of Blue Storm, it's gotten a lot harder to do that because they've made like the spot outside the natural a lot a lot wider. So uh, it's not gonna be as easy to push that spot. So fast pushing on this map isn't really as effective as on let's say Python. Um, so that's why I usually go for the flash build on this map because it's really really solid and you get good upgrades and you get a good economy up and it's just yeah you know you're pretty safe with it you know you can you can decide to get a Goliath if he is going for a Weaver build and you can decide to get Goliath if he's uh, taken to fast carriers and like even if you're surprised by, by the quick yeah, carrier tech you know there's still you still have the 2-1 upgrades and you still have the access to Goliath so it's usually not that bad even though if he surprises you so anyways back to the game um, I'm just scouting around a little I know that we're even on two bases or two expansions that is so I know that right now I'm in a pretty good position because the Protoss will or never wants to be uh, even expansions with Terran because that will eventually lead to Terran just overpowering the Protoss. So right now I'm just scouting around the map checking for a third expansion and delaying his third expansion as much as possible while I try to rush to that 2-1 upgrade and establish a pretty good push uh, later on. And I've been scanning his main a lot because I think that I've been I don't think that his unit count is that high and kinda surprises me because he's been on two base for quite some time so he should be able to get a large large amount of units but he hasn't gotten that much units yet so I'm thinking that something's probably up so I keep scanning his main for hidden stargates or whatever but it turns out or well as far as this game has gone there hasn't been any anything suspicious so so as you can see I'm about 143 or I am 143 so like I said around the 140 to 150 side limit you you would want to move out because that that is about the same timing that your 2-1 will finish uh, but not in this particular game though because I believe that my timing was pretty off but, but that's, that's, that's because of the early DT rush which, which kind of threw me off my game there for a second so I got, I got up my I got my arm way up a little bit too late but as you can see it doesn't really matter at this point because he has way too little units and I don't know why he might have been just uh, slipping in macro or I guess that my little harassment in the beginning hurt him much more than I thought it would so he's just going to engage me here and clearly I am superior in unit count and he doesn't really have much to do he can't really do much to stop it and uh, so yeah from this point on it's pretty much uh, well it's pretty much over you know and there there came my 2-1 upgrades so I mean the time was a little bit off it's supposed to come like when you push out at 150 but yes and hence the DT rush it was kind of delayed but I'm guessing this guy wasn't that good even though he's B minus, I mean, there's a lot of bad people at B minus too, uh, because he doesn't have any particular high tech and he doesn't have a lot of units, so 
I mean, you should be able to expect more from a better player, so I guess he's about average or something. So anyways, he's just gonna place a couple of storms here, and he's pretty dead, and he, he realized that. So I hope you enjoyed the new VOD, it wasn't anything special, but anyways.